Welcome back. Now, on my least recent trip down to Florida, I spent several days with lots of dear friends, but I finished off the trip with a few days with the one and only Mr. Dan Sharifi and his lovely wife, Martha. Sickness of the Americas. It was absolutely incredible. Now, he's changed so much, as you guys probably saw in the original video. I'll put a tag up here in the corner. But he's changed so much that it got kind of challenging to kind of do some of the stuff I wanted to do. One of those things that I wanted to do was to really kind of maybe make some kind of species or individual fish profiles and kind of highlight them. One group I wanted to do was all the amphilophus type, but they were kind of scattered all over the place in the warehouse, whereas last time they're all in one row. It would have been easier. So I didn't able to get that, but we did do several species that I thought were really, really pertinent. To, uh, everybody's excited to know a little bit more about what they are now. And one of them today we're going to highlight. It's a super, super common. It's a staple in the trade. But I don't know if you've ever seen it quite like this. This is a kind of a, it's not really a species profile because we'll talk about the original one, but it's more about this incredible form of the jaguar cichlid. Let's take a peek. <laughs> All right, this is the fish that most people would associate. This is Perichromus manicwens, the incredible jaguar cichlid. This is a wild caught specimen. This is the male of his breeding pair. This is the female. And they are truly a staple in the industry. Wait till you see this incredible xanthic fish. All right, Dan, you gotta tell me, last time I was here, we talked about the red doe and it was kind of a natural form that you guys had found. Now we're looking at something here, and uh, it's a screamer. What is this? So this is a xanthic man of once, and this is actually an interesting story. Um, this, is actually, this fish is actually derived, the ones that you see here are derived from the old gold man of once that were sold years ago in the hobby, and then I, uh, I sold quite a few of them. Uh, over the years, I haven't I haven't produced them in, in some time. Um, but what happened is uh, I started noticing that out of uh, out of uh, probably every about three or four or five hundred babies, uh, that we'd get one that didn't look like the others. It looked a little bit different, and then um, some of them would partially change into this color too. So uh, this is a product really of of uh, me having a, a few spawns and then uh, making sure you do the right genetic cross and you end up having uh, a group that looks like this. What's interesting about this is I wasn't quite sure at the time with the, whether this fish was a natural morph or if this was just a genetic oddity that, that we kind of found out in the aquarium trade. It happens um, in the aquarium trade. We've seen Xanthic, or I've, I've had Xanthic Frederick Stalli as well too. But in any event, what, uh, what we found out recently, about a year ago, is that there is a couple of locations in Costa Rica where this morph of this fish is plentiful. So um, it's, uh, it's difficult to get to, and um, obviously you could see that this fish would be easily picked out by predators with this color. Um, so uh, it's not really... Uh, I don't think it's something that you're going to find uh, prevalent where you find other jaguars in, uh, in Costa Rica, but we have a location for this fish now, so we're hoping that, that uh, we can get our hands on a few naturally occurring ones too, so we can kind of strike them the population, but uh, it's a stunning fish. Um, you see this more pop up in the hobby once every blue moon. I'd say. I take probably once every four or five years, whether it's in Asia or Europe or, or uh, somewhere around the world, you see a post of a picture that, of a fish that looks like this. But I don't think I've ever seen a group this big uh, with the same color pattern. Do they all so, turn, like there's a couple there, those two bigger ones that really have the pattern, just the gold pattern, but they have the pattern of a true manigrance. I'll put a video up of the manigrance to show the normal face, 
but like not all of them have changed. Do they all change to that as they get older? No, what I've what I've uh, seen is that the ones that have the pattern tend to be the males. The ones that don't have the pattern or have a very light pattern tend to be the females. So as you can see, this one that's swimming right about right in front of you, it's got a very very faint pattern. There's one stand sitting there behind the filter too, and it's got a very faint pattern as well too. The females have the faint pattern, but the males t typically have the more bolder patterns. Oh, okay. And care for the species would really be no different than uh, a normal managuets, right? No difference. Uh, you know, these guys, uh, they're parachromous, so they'll eat anything. But the one thing uh, I tend to realize with managuets is more than any other uh, parachromous, they're really sensitive to, uh, to dirty water. Parachromus, or this man, man of guants, generally speaking, they like super clean water. They don't like water that is uh, you know, even the slightest levels of ammonia or nitrates or nitrites. So. Well, they definitely are a shark fish. Parachromus managuensis are true piscivores, meaning their diet is comprised entirely of fish. Their lower lip has two to four small incisor teeth. Adults can reach a range of saying between 16 and 24 inches. That's an absolute monster. I've personally never seen one that big in captivity. But they can get that size and they can weigh up to three and a half pounds. They're well considered a food fish in their natural ranges. Males get decidedly larger than the females as you've seen. And they're a rather territorial species. So choosing tank mates for a species like this is absolutely of utmost importance. Having kept them multiple times over the years, one of my absolute favorite fish to keep with them would be dither fish of the group of the silver dollar types from South America, the Matinus, large red hook silver dollars. But if you want to mix other Central American species together, a lot of the big VA hot types, or as I often call them, the water cows, those big lunkers that are not really overly aggressive, but they can tolerate a little bit of squabbling should the pair of managuensis decide to spawn. But it's undenying, they are an incredible looking fish. Those large males with those very defining patterns. There's a reason this fish has been around a long time in the hobby. Maybe not the exanthic form, but it's truly a striking fish nonetheless. So make sure you got a nice big aquarium, and I think you'll have a nice long-lived fish. Managuents can live upwards of 12 to 15 years without question. I think they're absolutely striking. Very cool. Thanks, Dan. Thank you.